they're officially known as the African Hebrew Israelites of Jerusalem. The way they tell the story, they were driven out of the Holy Land thousands of years ago by the Romans. Then they fled to Africa, where they were enslaved and taken to America. We'd like to first thank the Holy One of Israel for blessing us with this beautiful day in northeastern Africa. Their leader, Ben Ami Ben Israel, sees himself as a modern day prophet who brought his people back to their spiritual home. I'm motivated by my love, my love for the community, my love for Israel, and my love for all people. And it is my desire to present to them a peace plan that is based upon the words of the prophets. Around 2,000 black Hebrews, as they're called, have made their home in southern Israel. They're best known as singers, and by and large, that's how they sustain their community. Their modern day exodus began in 1966, a time of racial violence in America. Back then, Ben Ami was known as plain old Ben Carter, a bus driver in Chicago. A bus driver who had a vision. And uh, the angel Gabriel did come to bring the word of God that it was time to start the journey back to the promised land and to establish the long-awaited kingdom of God. In 1969, after a brief stopover in Liberia, the black Hebrews made it to their new home. Demona is a tough town in the Negev desert, right next door to Israel's top secret nuclear reactor. At first they were welcomed, but then relations began to sour. The black Hebrews say their connection with God predates even the birth of the Jewish people. So despite the threat of deportation, they refused to convert to Judaism. As we just saw it as another group of Europeans dictating for us uh, who we were, what we were, what we could do and what we could not do. Stevie Wonder! Although they attracted star supporters like Stevie Wonder, the community remained in official limbo for decades. I love you. Their unusual lifestyle also set them apart from their Jewish neighbours. The black Hebrews are vegans. That means no meat, no eggs and no dairy. But come lunchtime, they say, that still leaves them plenty to smile about. Just to add to the mix, the black Hebrews are polygamous as well. Ben Ami has five wives. We observe the laws of purity, and that means that every month that uh, the sister in the house, once she's in her menstruation, then she cannot go into the kitchen, she cannot care for her man. You know that there has to be another female to come in and to handle these things. Israelis shunned the black Hebrews for decades until this Palestinian attack in 2002. Six people were shot dead, including the first black Hebrew to have been born in Israel. He'd been hired as the singer at a bat mitzvah celebration. Na, 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 na. When he was killed, we buried him here. 
His father, Prince Elkanan ben Shaliak, says the shared tragedy brought the black Hebrews together with the rest of the country. It opened doors, opened a lot of doors. It was an awakening. It was on the part of the government to wake, to uh, change, make some changes because the Israeli uh, community didn't know that it was that bad. Since then, the black Hebrews have been made permanent residents. Their children now fight for Israel. We're not neutral when it comes to the state of Israel. I mean that we're an integral part of the state of Israel, you know, and uh, we would do whatever is necessary to defend Israel. While the black Hebrews still don't have full citizenship, they feel that at last they've been welcomed home.